Well, good evening all. And welcome to tonight's TI Technology Webinar, hosted by Texas Instruments Australia. We are really excited to bring you exam readiness, general and further mathematics, with the wonderful Roger Wanda and the exciting Brian Lannan. My name is John Baymont, and I am your host for this evening. Uh, I teach mathematics to Year 7 to 12 students at the Lachlan Catholic College, Darwin, where I use TI technology to help students make stronger connections in their understanding of mathematics. And this evening, I'm excited to introduce our first panelist, Mr. Roger Wanda. Good evening, Roger. Good evening, everyone. Roger has a wealth of teaching experience, having taught secondary mathematics in Victoria, South Australia, and his native USA. He shares his knowledge at conferences, through projects with various teaching agencies, and in his current role as Lecturer of Mathematics Education at the Melbourne Graduate School of Education. Roger, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Thank you, John. Our second panelist for this evening is Mr. Brian Lannan. Good evening, Brian. Good evening, John. Good evening, everyone. I'm just wondering, now, John, see, how oh. come Roger's wonderful and I'm exciting? Well, yeah, I, well, I nearly <laughs> didn't say anything about you, but then I thought you may get upset, so I thought I'd better say okay. something in there. That was a bit of ad lib. I hope you appreciate that. Thank you. Um, <laughs> are you trying to say you're not exciting? Oh, well, I don't know. If you're working on a an alliteration thing, you've got you know, um, <laughs> wonderful Wadja. <laughs> I don't know. British Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Apart from obviously having a great humour, we can see that Brian is an experienced teacher of mathematics and physics in a range of educational establishments. He is an equally talented TI national trainer, and I always learn something from Brian, as you can see this evening, um, whether he runs his workshops or a webinar. So thank you, Brian, for joining us. Terrific. And for the first time um, on webinars in Australia, which is awesome, uh, maybe even be um, internationally, we have a guest presenter with us this evening, and we're fortunate to have um, a fellow teacher of mathematics, in fact, the head of maths at Mount Scopus Memorial College in Melbourne, Ms. Esther Tan. Good evening, Esther. Good evening. Good evening, John. So, Good evening, Esther. everyone else. Thank you. It's great that you're with us, and um, thank you very much for offering uh, to be with us and to share your knowledge and your current teaching experience. Um, I was reading your, your blurb here, and um, I thought how awesome it was that you do programming with the Inspires um, with the Year 8s. Would you, would you like to share a little story with us? Yeah, sure. Uh, I have this Year 8 class. Uh, they are actually the top uh, Year 8 uh, students. So what I did is that I start them with the cash calculator, like middle of term three, and we play around uh, with the calculator a bit, and then I have a dedicated day, we call that maths incursion, where I actually spend the whole day with the whole class, and we started coding using the TI code. And uh, we also learn about different functions and, you know, using domains and ranges for them to draw different pictures on there and using polar coordinates as well. And they really enjoy it. And through that, they actually learn different things about the functions and domains and ranges. And also, they, awesome. you know, they learn programming with that. Yeah. 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 Jeez, that sounds like I want to come down and, and be taught by you. <laughs> Always welcome. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, so I will now pass over to the w wonderful Roger uh, so that he can uh, inspire us with some information um, about uh, general and further mathematics. Roger, it's all over to you. Okay. Thanks very much, John. And uh, yes, you know, that's the very first time that anyone has ever linked my surname to the word wonder. In, in my 65 <laughs> years of life, there we are. Not quite correct. Okay, well, um, good evening, everyone, again. Um, just to give you an overview of what we're going to be covering um, today, we're going to talk a little bit about the importance of having a good look at the examiner's reports from the last couple of years. And I've got some dot points on the past two years for the maths examiner's reports just to look at. We'll talk about some of the issues regarding preparing your calculator, and that will um, vary from uh, topic to topic. But generally speaking, making sure that, uh, that you have the settings 
in the way that they should be. This is particularly important when uh, students have borrowed a calculator suddenly from their friend. Um, uh, we will be taking a look at uh, uh, data analysis and recursion in finance. Brian is going to be talking uh, about those. And then uh, for the various module uh, topics, uh, I'm going to be taking a look at uh, a couple of them, graphs and relations in geometry. And we're also going to be hearing from Esther on some geometry issues. So let's uh, just take a look now at, um, at some of the uh, facets of the examination. You know that exam one uh, is in two parts, sections A and B. I won't insult anyone's intelligence there, but just keep in mind that uh, the, the structure of the exam long before they um, sit the exam in late October, early November, they need to, uh, to know what the structure is and how the course fit into those two parts. Examination two um, also has a, uh, a structure that's uh, dealing with the uh, core and the, and the modules, as that slide indicates. Um, in the 2016 examiner's reports, um, I've just uh, called out a few of the, of the many things that the examiners have said. Notice that they've got some comments regarding um, both parts of the core. Um, and these, these are areas that they felt that students needed to practice on a little bit more. This is not an, an exclusive, an exhaustive list, um, but it does highlight some of those features. And um, uh, certainly um, uh, in, the, in the couple of the modules that I've listed for the matrices and the graphs and relations for paper one, and then some general things in, in paper two, and notice the, the usual uh, friends that we've had, rounding, the reasonableness of, uh, of answers, students need to, to use reading time, and where more than one mark is attached to an answer, um, their ability to set out the multiple steps. And certainly technology can help from all, with all of that. Okay, and uh, in 2015, it was a similar kind of story. Uh, they were more specific about the um, uh, some of the statistical applications that uh, that needed to be to be looked at, and once again, reading time, rounding, and setting out, uh, etc. So um, uh, those ideas uh, you can see in much more detail when you actually go into the website. I'll hand over now to uh, to Brian, who's going to be uh, talking about preparing your calculator, and then on to other things. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Roger. And I have to say, um, that was uh, an oversight by me. I didn't make any connection to your surname until you said it, so I do apologize. That was not intentional. I generally think you're wonderful, so thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> OK, you'll, you'll keep. I, <laughs> thank you, John. <laughs> Mr. Exciting, it's all yours. Thank, thank you, wonderful Roger. Um, I didn't think it had anything to do with the surname. I thought it was more the Roger. But, um, uh, <laughs> Roger and Brian, you've got. Um, this is the second year in a row that Roger has done that analysis of the examiner's reports. Uh, so thank you there. Um, and I think a, a pretty important thing to do for all exams, really, um, you know, maths or otherwise, to uh, get the word from the examiners to see, get an indication of what they're going to be looking for, because ultimately that's the aim that we're we're headed to. Now. Um, in the script here, I should uh, initially be telling you about preparing your calculator, but I'm just going to diverge from the script a little bit here because as I indicated, um, Roger and I did do this webinar last year at about the same time. So if people have been attending both, I thought a quick overview of what's old and what's new and, and where we can find some particularly useful resources. So we did do this last year. Uh, and the year before, um, Russell Brown uh, prepared a, a terrific um, set of TNS files and a, a PDF document that tied it all together. I think that's wonderful stuff. And once again, I'm going to share that. I'll share a little bit of that in my section here. Um, there are other further mathematics webinars that we've conducted um, earlier this year on recursion and financial modeling and also on further maths applications, particularly with view to um, 
preparing SAC tasks and the word applications was deliberately chosen there because that also ties in with the corresponding course in Western Australia. Last year I also ran a session on Give Me Five and have published some activities in relation to that with five figure summaries with fences and, and outliers for the univariate data section that is on the website. What is new? I've already mentioned the Western Australia. Um, about this time last year, working with um, a couple of the presenters there, Stephen Julian and Jody Crothers, we ran a series of webinars aimed at students. So it was a tutoring, it was a series of 10 tutoring sessions for students. They were recorded, they are available on YouTube and I will show you that a little bit. Also, if you check the website, there's much, much more now on the Senior Curriculum Inspirations on the Texas Instruments website. That's complete activities. And uh, coming soon, in fact, some already on YouTube, is some more student exam preparation videos. Again, these are being prepared as I speak uh, for specifically for student viewing. The Mathematical Methods series has already been published on YouTube, but not yet on the TI website. The Further Mathematics series is almost completely recorded, so stay on the lookout for the Texas Instruments newsletter. Make sure you check the website, because that's coming out, and obviously the timing of that is just in the lead up to students' exams. You will have seen on our background slides that we often have with webinars, the link to the YouTube channel um, or the Texas Instruments Australia YouTube channel, this is here. I have added in here a link to the uh, Western Australian Certificate of Education Applications exam series. And this is it here. So recorded by mostly Jody Crothers uh, a series there, so that's worth looking for. So go to the go to YouTube, Texas Instruments Australia channel, and look for the playlists, or just type in WACE Maths Applications Exam Series. Also, I mentioned here we have the Mathematical Methods series. This has just been recorded and published uh, in the last couple of weeks, and you can see some of the topics there. So, uh, on the Texas Instruments Australia website, as I said, to watch those previous webinars, click on On Demand Webinars. You have the one that Roger and I did this time last year. You have the one that uh, was on applications earlier this year, and you have one specifically on recursion and financial modelling as well, which we're going to be doing a bit of this evening. But if you want to see either any of these in greater depth, there they are. If you have only one hour to spare, well, just watch this one because this is this is the top of the pops. This is the, the best of the best. Um, okay, so preparing your calculator. First of all, operating system. Be aware that um, students often students might borrow work with a borrowed calculator leading into the exam, um, and this is one of the things that should be on a. a shall we say, a, a checklist for them to do. Um, quick way to do that, because some of the features that you've demonstrated in class or maybe on other calculators that they've used may not be there. It would be rather catastrophic if they had an old, a calculator with an old operating system and it bamboozled them. So to check on that, hitting the house, go to number five settings, go to um, status, number four, and here you can see the version number, which on my computer emulator here, 4.4. And guess what? That is not actually the latest. If you take a look on the TI Australia website, it's now 4.5. Now guess what? I would not encourage you to upgrade, say, from 4.4 to 4.5 just in the lead into the exams because uh, like anything a version change might bring into some some uh, some things that you're not quite aware of 
So you might call me, you, call, you can call me conservative if you like, I don't care. I have not changed it on my emulator uh, leading into tonight because I knew I was doing this presentation. So I'm going to leave that until after the presentation. I can tell you I will upgrade um, uh, because there's some great stuff in that next version, unit conversions, which is going to be absolutely fantastic for my um, engineering students at TAFE. So I do look forward to that, but just on operating system, you know, if you've got 4.0 or later, I'd be happy with that, but make sure you've got at least that, okay? Um, also, in, uh, in the settings, if you want to uh, go into the document settings for, for further mathematics, put the angle in degrees. Now, by default, it's in radian, and mine normally sits in radian because I mostly teach in calculus courses. And calculation mode, I have in auto. Um, for most things in, in further mathematics, it's, it's better to have it in approximate. Alternatively, if students do know what they're doing, they can be in automatic mode and then uh, do the control and then enter to get the approximate answer. For the um, display digits, float six is probably the best. That's a, a general standard. However, I do know that some teachers like to, to change that when students are dealing with financial mathematics. When you do that, do not go to float two, okay? Because what that'll often do is put things in scientific notation in what looks to be an, uh, an unnecessarily complicated manner. For financial, if you want to make things round off to the number of cents, fix two is the, is the one, okay? to work with. I'll just show you an example there. If I go to my current document, which is a calculator page, if I've just got some figures here, and I'll do uh, divide by um, seven. Okay, so this has come out rounded off to two decimal places here. If I had that in, I'll just change my settings here. Float. What can often happen is I get this business, 6.5 times 10 to the 2. So you can see how that's going to be a confusion to students. My advice, float 6 is pretty much, uh, the, pretty much the standard. If you do wish to adjust it only for the financial part, make sure students know how to switch in and out of that comfortably. Brian, somebody just asked, yep. should we change the yep. settings when you're going between the top different topics? Um, I would only do it, the only topic I would change it for would be the financial maths. I, I tend to think float six would be the best, the better standard, to be honest. Yep. Um, okay, so operating system, settings, angle in degrees, calculation mode approximate. Now, with, when we're working with data and statistics, quite often students are asked for the um, uh, coefficient of determination, or R squared. Now that's a, a setting, a separate setting, which isn't normal, isn't automatically set up, but uh, once you've set it up, it would stay there. So that is if you're in a statistics um, page, um, and so I have no data here, I have no graphing, but on the menu in the statistics page, there's a separate settings um, toggle here in number six. And you see here, uh, the display of digits is automatic, but this little tick here for diagnostics. I'll just do a quick demonstration of how this works. I'm gonna tick the diagnostics on, and if I've got some data, I'll just quickly put some in. And I'm just going to do a bit of a, uh, a graph of um, this against that or that against this. So I have this being my um, explanatory variable. 
and I'll just oops. And my response variable that can be I don't know. Okay, so then if I graph this against that or that against this, here we go. And if I then now wish to do a, uh, a regression of that, I'll just do the linear regression, you can see here that the coefficient of determination has automatically appeared. Whereas if I didn't have that diagnostics box checked, it does not, does not appear. Okay. Now, another one I'm going to show you. Um, Pre-written files are very useful, and you can alter the data once you're in it. Um, and also dynamic notes. So let's show you this one here. Um, this is a dynamic notes page. And you've seen that when you add pages in, so when I add a page, uh, notes is one of the options. And we can put math, bo math boxes and values in that, math boxes in the red here. So this page is set up, um, as you can see, to, given two points, work out the gradient and to work out the equation between those two points. Okay? Nothing needs to be changed below here it will automatically do the calculations. And this, I've put this here as just one example. So let's say uh, I want to change this. So the first point, instead of being 5, 12, let's say that it's, I don't know, 3, 4. So I change that to 3, and I press Enter to uh, get the feedback there in green, um, and 3, 4, and what did I say? Well, we make it, I don't know. Um, eight, seven, and you see now that the, the gradient, it's, this is automatically recalculated, so the gradient is 0 0.6, and it's also done a new calculation for the equation to the line. Now, I'm going to show you one other little trick here. Students now will have saved in their um, you know, My Documents part, they will have saved a, a set of useful such files and think, yes, in the exam I'm going to go in and just edit things. That will be nice and neat and sweet. Have you played with the widgets? When we were adding pages before, you've seen, and this came about operating system, I think, 4.2, add a, add a widget. And the only option that came out with it was this thing, stopwatch. OK. Well, that's... Nice, neat, OK, if I want a stopwatch. Um, but I think a lot of uh, teachers and students don't necessarily understand what a widget is. It's a, what a widget is, is it's a single page that can be inserted into any other document. For example, I had my document back over here, remember? OK, so let's say, for example, in here, all of a sudden I wanted to calculate the gradient between two points or the equation of the line between two points. Well, I can insert a widget, but at the moment, the only widget available to me is a stopwatch. I don't want that. So if I've got a page at any stage that I've developed, it could be a notes page, it could be just a calculator page, it could be a graph, anything that you think, that's a, a very useful single page tool, it can be saved as a widget. Now be careful, it must be the first page in your document. So the other pages aren't going to matter here. So when I save this, I'll go document and file, save as, and it's going into my documents, but rather than just drop it in as a, you know, a, uh, a download or a particular folder or my library, I'm going to go into my widgets. Now you see at the moment the only one there is stopwatch. 
when I save this, there's going to be another one there. And so now when I look into widgets, I'll go back to this document here. Remember I was looking to add a widget. If I go control document add page, I'm going to add a widget. I've now got this option. And that will, is available to me now forever and ever as long as I keep this calculator and I don't delete it, delete that widget. Any document I have, I can open this page. So how cool is that? So, and I just need to confirm that these are my points. And, and you've got the idea. That is, that is very, very useful. I think that's a wonderful tool. Okay, data analysis, we better move on. Um, points, built-in stats functionality, um, I'll just quickly show that. When we had on, say, this document, uh, you saw that, I, that we did, uh, we did a regression here. Now, as soon as a regression is done, there's a whole heap of variables that are then created. And if I just put, I'm going to go calc, uh, calculate a page here. If I hit the var key, all of those variables are there. So, for example, if I wanted the um, correlation coefficient, there it is. If I wanted, uh, I think, did I set things, sorry, um, I wouldn't have thought it to be exactly one. I'll just go back into that. Um, if I wanted the coefficient of determination, there that is. I think I've rounded off here, I'm not sure why. Um, if I want, um, you know, the regression equation, oops, I need to put a bit more into that. If I want the, uh, the fun of holding a telephone in one hand and a mouse in the other. Um, if, you, if you want all the statistical results, there they are. Okay, so that's a handy one whenever you've done a regression or you've done a, uh, could be a statistical summary of univariate statistics even, that they're automatically all set up as variables there. So back into this, so there's some of the built-in functionality, the dynamic notes, RR squared. The univariate data and box plots, outliers and fences, I'm going to quickly show you my give me five. But before doing that, I did promise to show you something that Russell um, wrote a couple of years ago. Russell Brown is probably the, the best presenter I've seen on using statistics uh, on Inspire. And he, this, this has been published on, our, on the Texas Instruments website. I'm going to include it in the package of notes for this webinar as well. And Russell has this icon here, which uh, reading through, if you click on that icon, it can bring up um, various other TNS files. So that's now opening up, and you see there another notes page. So I'll leave that one with you. I think that's a great resource to have. And it goes into further detail with sample exam style questions. Some of those points I've already mentioned there. Uh, for recursion and financial modeling, generating a sequence, and financial solver. I'm getting time conscious here, so I'll just quickly show you. This was some of the activities on my GiveB5 activity, available on the website. It's also available as a webinar. Um, I won't go into that now, but basically what the graphing does is it, it allows you to input a set of data. It produces the statistical summary, as I've already demonstrated. It automatically produces the uh, box plot. 
but I've also calculated this to organise this to calculate the upper and lower fences and therefore indicate at the outliers. Accompanying that is a student worksheet and a teacher notes and answer sheet. Now on the sequences um, for recursion, quickly on this one, repeated um, uh, operations can easily be done on the calculator home screen. And we've previously talked about arithmetic progressions and geometric progressions. Um, but the new terminology in the new study design, as you know, is we're looking more in terms of difference equations, where, for example, in this one here, I've got this thing uh, starting with 5. It's doubling and adding 3 every time you press Enter. So T0, the initial term, was 5. Uh, and the nth term is defined by two times the previous term and three more for good luck. Now, problem with that, though, is from the study design, we, we don't have it, and what will be reflected in exams, we don't have the nth term being defined in terms of the previous term. We have the n plus oneth term being defined in terms of the current term. So this is the notation that students are more likely to see. And in the generate sequence command, which uh, is accessible through the lists and spreadsheets component of the calculator, it's only set up for the nth term, unfortunately. However, um, to set it up this way, it can be done in the function ed uh, editor, so in a, in a graphs page. Again, that's a relatively new feature. I was going to show you, but I won't because I'm conscious very much of time. Uh, and so, John, I'm going to uh, I'm going to check out here because I would have I was hoping to show this one as well for the financial solver, but I uh, I don't want to rob too much time though. See, I told you you're exciting. There's too many things you need that's to right. uh, too to many show. exciting things. Yeah, that's what it is. See, I wasn't wrong. And uh, so I'll just pass over to Esther as we're sorting that out. And um, like I said, it's fantastic. We've got Esther with us this evening. And Brian, thanks for sorting that out um, and um, getting Esther on board. So that's really exciting. Uh, so I think those widgets are really, really um, a great addition. Um, and I've sent a link on the uh, chat page of where more information can be found out about the widgets. Um, so if people want to look at that, they can do. And are there any other situations where you've used them, Brian, where you found them really beneficial? Look, I'll be I'll be totally honest. I've only recently found out about their true their true capacity myself. So cool. uh, I'm uh, just thinking, particularly in an lead into an exam, it's the sort of thing that uh, would be very useful. Yep. Yeah. And if we can get Esther to share her screen, then um, yeah, we'll I'm be able to then sharing it now. Wonderful. Esther, okay, it's all yours. Screen? Good luck. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, basically, I just want to uh, show. Uh, how easily it is can be done on the TRX uh, Inspire to show data transformation. So what I did in class is that I told students if you are given a question like this, where you have the data given, and I said that if the question asks you what kind of transformation would you do, you know, would you want to use to analyze the data. So I told them that the first thing you do is to enter the data in this spreadsheet. So that's what they can quickly get it set up. Now, once they enter the data in this and spreadsheet, so I told them that you should actually go and graph it. So open up data and statistics. And in here, let's just pick up the explanatory variable, which is the temperature. And we're going to graph it with the response variable, which is students. So once they graph that, I'll get students to look at the we always say uh, the circle of transformation, which is a note that I gave it to them. And in this circle of transformation, I'll just tell them that where does the data lies, and they'll look at it and they say, okay, it is over here. So which means that we can actually uh, implement all this transformation here. So what we're going to do is that now we are going back to our list and spreadsheet, but we have log Y. So going back to list and spreadsheet, so we can actually type in log. In this case, our y is students, so we are going to type in log students in here. And we're going to put in the formula. To put in the formula, you put in the equal sign. And then you can put in log over here. 
and then we have lot 10. Now, over here, we can use like what uh, Brian has mentioned before, the under the bar part. We pick up students in here. And then once you press enter, you've got that set up as well. So the other transformation that uh, students can use, we are just going to enter all the various transformation in here. So we have the reciprocal of a student. So we just type in with the student in here. And I'm going to put in the formula again. So 1 over student. So again, we go to the bar, pick up students in here. OK, so we just keep setting them up, all the different transformation that they found there. So the other one that we can have is log 10. And again, we set it up here. So we are going to put in log here. So we have log 10. And click on bar, pick up 10, and set it up. So there's another transformation that we saw is the reciprocal of 10. So again, we're going to put that as reciprocal 10 and set it up as 1 on 10. So click on bar and pick up 10. OK, so once we have all this set up, we're going back to our data and statistics here. Now, before we do that, let's just put in the regression line. So under Analyze Graph, Regression, and then show that. So like Brian says that you have to make sure you turn on the diagnostic, otherwise you can't see the R squared here. So what I tell students is that we are going to try different transformation on this particular screen and just to take note of the R squared to see which transformation actually gives you the best R squared. So if Instead of students, now we are going to change students to log students. And just see that your R square has changed in here. And we can compare that to one on students, which is with the students here. And again, you see how R square has changed. Or we can actually change it to 10, log 10. Now, but before we do that, we can always change only one variable at a time. So we're going to put students back in here. And we're going to change 10 to log 10. And again, you can see how R squared has changed, or 1 on 10. So by doing that, students can actually see the effects of the transformation being done. And with all the R squared, they can actually compare them. And of course, when they see that, they realize that that actually gives you the best R squared. So they should recommend that you know that's the transformation that we want to do. Yeah, basically, that's what I actually show students on that. Yeah, that's my presentation. Fantastic. And um, I could hear uh, Brian in the background fretting uh, because you presented so well. <laughs> Thank you, Esther. I think he's a bit worried that you may, uh, you may take his spot in future webinars. So, uh, yeah, um, no, be I careful, use lots Brian. No, I think you present. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, um, and, and well done. Yeah. I, I think... Um, for regular webinar attendees will have seen that um, uh, in previous years we've had uh, a range of people hosting the program. This year, I think uh, Texas Instruments Australia just selected the two guys that they thought had the you know the best faces for radio. So John and I won the uh, won the job, and we thought let's try to <laughs> let's try to, 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 to rev this. It took you a while there, John. <laughs> let's try to rev this up and, and make it, make it more screen. exciting. Go on, Rog. And um, <laughs> while Roger's sharing his screen, yes. And, and uh, we, we, as John and I looked at this, we thought, well, we've got some interesting ideas, but I don't know that we've really got the ability. And then we realised that it was staring right at us. It, it was you, the, uh, the teachers. So thank you, Esther, the first of the teachers to have um, replied to our, to our offer or, or taken up our offer of uh, coming in as guest presenter. I think there's no better professional development than to be sharing your own ideas with other teachers. And I, I know, I, I feel forever indebted to uh, uh, MAV, Mathematical Association of Victoria, for their policy of encouraging teachers to do that where I first started um, running workshops. So Roger. Thanks, Brian. So, well done, Esther. And, and Roger, yeah. OK. Well, thanks, everyone. And uh, uh, Esther, that was a, an absolutely uh, smashing uh, presentation that you did there. Thank you very much for that. Um, 
I'm going to uh, take a look at three um, uh, different files that have been created, and of course they're going to be appearing on the um, TI website, TI Australia website. Uh, just another reminder for those of you who may have joined us late that um, the files that uh, are being used here um, have been set up so that the uh, settings are for degrees uh, for the angles uh, and uh, and float for the way that the numbers are expressed and also approximate. Um, my first file is dealing with um, uh, uh, a line uh, determined by two points and um, taking a look a little bit at relational graphing. Now you saw another example of one where the um, uh, the notes page was used uh, probably a bit more efficiently than the one that you're going to be seeing here. But I'm going to show you how you build these up from scratch because it does become it does become useful. So this is the the idea in the first one that uh, we're going to create a template for any line where two points are known, and um, uh, the example that I'm going to have is well, if we have these two points. 2072 and 4522. We're going to take a look at how we might generate the line equation of the um, that connects those two points, and then find the x-intercept of that once we put it onto a graph. So um, uh, the first part of this, uh, it, uh, and this is a notes page. Remember, uh, in here we have a um, math box, and just uh, for those who aren't aware of that, when you go to menu. Uh, insert math box. That's where you find those. But I've I've done these already. So, so in this math box, the first thing that I'm going to do is set up the y2. Whoops. I'm going to set up the fraction, which is the control divide, and up in the numerator, I will put y2 take away y1. In the denominator, we'll put x2 minus x1. And in that, we're then going to place the cursor and move the cursor one space to the right. But it's still within the, the, uh, the math box. And we're now going to store that. So I press Control var and store that as the letter M, which, as we know, is the, is the gradient. When I press Enter, um, when I press Enter on that, you notice that the Inspire calculator turns things around a little bit because there's that internal algorithm that's working to make sure that uh, we have a presentation where numerically we get it in order. And students should know that the order in which you do the subtracting, as long as it's consistent in numerator and denominator, it doesn't matter which point is x1, y1, which point is x2, y2. Anyway, uh, then down below, so that is stored now as the, as the variable m. Then down below on this same notes page, we're going to use the point gradient form of the equation. So I'm going to be typing that in now as, uh, again, within another math box. It's very important that you put that in, y minus y1 equals m and then multiplied by, <coughs> open brackets, x minus x1. I close the brackets. And again, before I press Enter, I want to store that. And I'm going to give it a, a variable name that will mean something to me. And uh, in my world, that's going to, it's, it's a linear equation. So I've used those six letters there to designate that. When I press Enter, you'll notice that we get a, a form that it does not involve M anymore, but it's got the version of M that we had stored before. It's got all the X1, Y1 uh, versions in it. And you notice that it, the two variables that remain are the Y and X, which students are going to be looking for. And now, in the uh, as variables, those two uh, values are stored. So. Uh, we can then use the following calculator page in this file to substitute the point coordinates into the into the equation. And I'll just uh, bring that down here, just as a reminder of what we're going to be doing. We're going to use the following calculator page. So over on page 
just a little reminder that I've put in with um, actions insert comment um, that the values of x1, y1, x2, and y2 are all there. And the way that this isn't the only way, and some uh, people may feel, well, is this the, the most efficient way to do it? But it's on a calculator page now. And um, so we're going to actually uh, use that to solve for y in that, e in that equation. So I'm going to type the word solve. You can also use the algebra. Um, open up the uh, brackets. And in place of solve, I'm just going to call on now my variables. And I press var, and I want linear equation. I want to solve linear equation. I want to solve it for y, so comma y. And then as I take the cursor to the right, I want to give it some conditions. So I press control equal sign. We get the conditional bar, which means such that. And into this now, we're going to put all of our various variables, which we've got up on top. We've got the fact that um, x1 is equal to 20. I press the space bar and then type in the word and. Another space bar, y1 is equal to 72. Space and x1 or x2 is equal to 45. Space and space y2 is equal to 22. So all those conditions have been put in. When I press Enter, I get the equation that we had uh, in lin eqn, that, that variable. And just to remind yourselves of what that was, press star, go to lin eqn. And so what it's done is sub those values in, but we get a nice workable form there with the y equals 112 minus 2x. Notice the decimal points are there because we're on approximate mode and, um, and in the float um, setting as well. If we want to answer the question which involved the x-intercept, we just solve that for letting, uh, letting y equal 0. So once again, solve, open brackets, go up to the top, grab that equation, Put in comma x, and then on the right, once again, we are going to do under the condition that y is equal to 0. And when we press Enter, we've got the x-intercept of 56. We could put that on a graph, but being conscious of time, we're going to move on. on the second problem, and remember that on the second problem, all the memory of the previous variables has been wiped out, which is good. Um, this is uh, just taking a look at the fact that Inspire now, um, and most of you would know this, but uh, it does have a feature for relational graphing, meaning we don't need to do the big transformation and turning, it, turning everything into a y equals. So the idea is that we're going to be going into a graphs page. We're going to change the entry line from its usual function mode to relation mode and enter these two equations, 3x minus 5 and 2x plus 4y equals 12. Those are the equations. And um, we're, going to, we're going to see how they, how they go into the calculators or into the graph screen. So I go over to the next page, which is, this is what we get when we open up a, a graph screen. But if I press uh, Control, Menu, and select number 1, which is the Graph Entry Edit, I want to go down to Relation, because I want to put, it, put the equations in, in a different format. And now, until we change it, and I'm not going to change it here, we can put them in in any way they were. The first equation was y equals 3x take 5, so we have y equals 3x minus 5. When I press Enter, we have the first line there. The question that was back on the previous page was to find the point of intersection between that one and another line. So in order to uh, access that, that second line, um, I'm going to press Control Menu once again, and I want to go to item number two, which is we want to sh once again show the entry line. 
other ways to do that, of course, but a second relation coming up, and this one um, is 2x plus 4y, whoops, plus 4y equals 12. Press enter, and we get our second line in a, in a different color. To find the point of intersection between those two, and notice how, uh, I guess I'll just put an editorial comment in here, how wonderful it is that we didn't have to rewrite y in a, uh, y, in, in a y equals form. We could sketch the graph just as it was. This is a very powerful feature of the um, Inspired Graph screen as we now see it. To find the point of intersection, I'll remind you that that's simply uh, pressing menu. We go to number six, analyze graph. We go to number four, intersection. I'll just leave that path up there for a moment, which is a good pedagogical tool for all of us to not just uh, have students saying the numbers, but what they're actually doing. They're analyzing the graph. They're finding a point of intersection. And when they find that, then the next thing that they have is a sliding line, which is for a left and right boundary. So I go to the left of the point of intersection and tap it. Whoop it. Better do that uh, again. So I go to menu, go to analyze graph, go to intersection, and here's my left point. Just tap that, and then there's to the right, and so it's the intersection point between these two values, and I hit that, and there's my point of intersection, 2.29, 1.86. So that's um, uh, the file, and again, you'll be able to uh, download the blank version of this. Uh, or the one I've, I'm putting both of them in, the, the one that uh, has some information in it um, will be one that, a file that's marked play at the end of the file name and the one that uh, is completely blank for you to practice on um, uh, will be up there as well. We're now going to go to the um, sine and cosine rules. I know that we only have a very few minutes left, so I'm going to go to a file developed for the sine and cosine rules. and. Um, We'll um, take a look at what's involved in that. Uh, this one has um, uh, a structure that is, if we just take a look up here, we can see control up arrow. It's two problems, each of which consists of three pages. So we'll take a look at the first page. This is for using the sine rule uh, to find unknown angles in the side of a triangle. Again, we're going to set up a template that, uh, uh, that involves the the use of the sine rule and the and the cosine rule. And in order to do that, um, uh, in this template, we're going to go to the menu and we're going to insert a math box. Into that math box, we're going to put something that looks like the sine rule that you're always taught uh, or that you will have already taught. So we're going to put the fraction keys in first. And up here, I'm going to have A down below, I'm going to put the sign, open brackets, X. And notice that we can't put capital letter A down there like we might see in many textbooks, so we've got to use different, uh, different variables here. And then that's equal to another fraction, control, oops, control, side sign, that. Control, divide sign, and we have another fraction where we have B over the sine of Y. Sine open brackets Y. Now, once again, like we did in the previous one that I showed you, I'm going to store that, and I've um, been very creative here, and control var, I'm going to store that as sine, S-I-N-E. That's the name of the variable I'm giving it. As soon as I press enter, that will turn bold. Um, if I want to check what it's equal to, I just type S-I-N-E. It is now considered to be bold, and it's that formula. And that can be used now within this file uh, to sub in the values of A, B, X, and Y. I can see we're very close to our time. So um, the three files that I've uh, um, have developed for tonight. I've taken a look at the, at one of them. We've got started to get into the second one. The third one, which deals with the various versions of the area formula for Heron's rule and for the uh, trig functions, can be done in much the same way. And there, I think you'll be able to follow along in the pages. Very happy for people to contact me. 
uh, for further information on any of those files. But we are out of time at this stage, so I'm going to pass over to John. And um, thank you all for, um, for watching tonight. And, and thank you, Roger. Um, like, like you mentioned, and, and I've said in the chat window, uh, all the CNS files mentioned this evening uh, and all the documents will be available um, on the on-demand webinar page, um, as well as being emailed to everybody who's attended tonight, uh, along with their certificate. So uh, thank you for making those, Roger, and sharing them with us. Much appreciated. No worries. Could, could, I, could I also point out, uh, John, that the project that I referred to before where at the moment we are making a whole, edit, whole group of recordings, uh, short recordings, 10-minute snippets aimed at students who are doing their revision for the further maths exam coming up this year. Uh, Roger is one of our key presenters for that project. So those teachers who are, are subscribed to the Texas Instruments Australia newsletter, keep an eye on that and you'll get um, notified of the release day for that. And, and, and that's what fantastic there, that some of those yeah. are already up yeah. on the uh, on the YouTube channel, which is fantastic. So yeah. there's so much support available for teachers and students to access. These are no logins; just um, just do a search for them. Um, it's just fantastic. So these are all the ones that you were mentioning earlier. So thank you very much for doing those. Okay, so we'll start wrapping things up. Um, if you have any last-minute questions, please try and get those asked. As I know, Roger and Brian will endeavour to answer them or we'll equally add them to future webinars. So when you leave the webinar tonight, a brief survey will automatically appear here in your browser, and your feedback does guide us as we plan future online events. We listen to your feedback, and so please, we hope you do share your thoughts uh, on the post-webinar survey. Importantly, your certificate of attendance will be emailed to you in the next 48 hours, along with the link to the on-demand and the YouTube version of the recordings as any relevant documents, as I've already mentioned. Um, and after we leave tonight, if you do want any post-webinar follow-up, um, Roger's already off offered that you can contact him, and I know Brian is also uh, the same, uh, please feel free to phone or email us, and we'll put you in touch with either of those gentlemen, um, because we always like to keep in touch with him if we can help in any way, that uh, is what we're here for. Um, so, and that brings us to the end, sadly, of tonight's webinar. Uh, thank you very much, Roger, Brian, and Esther, for everything you've shared tonight. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Cheers. And um, I know the participants have really appreciated it. I certainly have, and um, from the feedback that I've had in both the Q&A and the chat window, it's been really positive, so thank you very much. And equally, we do these for the teachers out there, both for live like tonight and for on demand in future. So thank you for watching this. Um, I hope you found it beneficial. All the very best uh, with your teaching and your students in the upcoming exams. And have a fantastic evening. Good night. Terrific.